Before the main movie starts, I just want to tell you about the baits I used on the very first time that I went fishing. I was six years old, it was 1959, and my dear dad took me to the Grand Union Canal at Ealing in London. We had bread, worms from the garden, and a few maggots that my dad called gentles. Anyway, we caught loads of fish, some beautiful roach, and a stack of gudgeon, particularly after the big barges went past and stirred up the bottom. I even have my dad's wonderful old wooden reel that we used on that day. Well, I had such a fantastic time. I wanted to go fishing all the time after that. And so my dear dad took me to the ponds and lakes and rivers around Watford in Hertfordshire. And on holidays, he took me to the Suffolk Star, the River Kennet, the Hampshire Avon, and Throop Fishery on the Dorset Star. To begin with, I stuck with the same three baits, bread, worms, and maggots. But having discovered the chub and barbel on the Avon and Stour, I then used some cheese, luncheon meat, and a bit of corn. And they were the mainstay of the baits that all of my friends and most people I knew were using in those days. As I grew older and more independent, I could cycle to venues, and my mates and I found a lovely little lake near Watford, surrounded by trees and rhododendron bushes and covered in pond lilies. It had loads of tension bream and a few big carp. Now, at the beginning of the fishing season, with standard baits, we'd catch loads of fish. Our silver paper indicators would smack into the butt ring, line would pour from the reels, and we'd pull into fish and fill our keep nets. But as the season progressed, those runs turned to twitches, and our nets would only contain one or two fish after the end of the session. I knew the fish had become scared of the baits. Nowadays, we, nowadays we'd say the baits were blown. Anyway, my mum used to make me paste sandwiches to take fishing. I didn't like them very much, but I ate them nonetheless. Anyway, in our kitchen, I saw little glass pots of Shippum's paste with flavours like crab and shrimp and I think salmon and liver. And I just suddenly thought one day, what if I mixed those pastes with bread? Would, I, would the fish like that? Anyway, I did. I made some bread paste with one of the flavours of Shippum's took it to this lake and I bagged up. I was getting these thumping runs again and my mates on standard baits were just getting the twitches. They couldn't understand what was going on. They even asked me, what bait are you using? Well, to begin with, I didn't let on. Now, on that first occasion I used my special bait, I actually hooked one of the lake's big carp, but it tanked off, off into the lilies and I, and I didn't land it. But it was one of the lake's monsters so I started to call my bait monster bait, and I told my mates about it. But I'd learned a huge lesson there, that, you know, standard traditional baits are good, but they get blown easily, and if you tweak them in some way with a flavor, you'll start to catch fish again. And that's how I fished for decades. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I just used my standard traditional baits, but spent a lot of time thinking about how they looked, how they tasted. And I caught lots of fish. I was very happy. I didn't join the Boily Brigade. Despite the fact that they were fantastic baits and people were catching a lot of fish on them, I decided that that type of fishing wasn't for me. So, in 2002, I decided on a change of life. I emigrated to Kenya, where I bought a boat and I went big game fishing on the Indian Ocean. There wasn't much call for bread, worms, and maggots out there. And I was using huge fish baits and enormous lures after shark, marlin, wahoo, fantastic fish like that. Anyway, after 17 years of that, I came back to England in 2019. Now, while I was away, the fishing bait industry had exploded. My God, the fishing shops were packed with boilies, pellets, 
flavours in an enormous amount of baits, none of which I was very familiar with, really. So I decided I would stick to what I knew best. I bought a place very near the Hampshire Raven and discovered that within walking distance there was fantastic roach and chub fishing. And that's what I did, using my traditional baits. And I've done very well. In about a season and a half of fishing, I've caught quite a few two pound roach and some lovely chub. These are the pictures that I took of them. All the roach are two pounders and, and the, the, the chubs are six pounders. Recently, I remembered that I made a bait movie 20 odd years ago in the late 1990s, so I thought I'd watch it again. I did, and I thought, that information is relevant, I, I've been catching fish on these baits. So, I decided to present it on YouTube. Now bear in mind, it's not in high definition. The computer system that I had in those days wasn't capable of that. Also. The bait additives that are featured don't exist anymore, but there are loads in tackle shops and supermarkets. For example, when I got to England, I bought some wonderful Scopex, one of my favourites. For example, I always flavour maggots. On rivers in particular, I found that very useful for roach, particularly the sweet flavours, Scopex and vanilla and things like that. So, here's the bait movie, presented by a very young looking and smart me. Enjoy. In this video, Jill and I will be demonstrating how to make some special baits from tried and tested ones like maggots, hemp, bread and luncheon meat. But first, why bother to make specials? Well, it's a fact that on many waters, fish have wised up to normal baits and are very wary of taking them. Modifying them by changing their appearance, smell and taste, gives these baits a new lease of life and the effect can be quite remarkable. Here, for example, is a bear run devoid of any fish. Introduce some special flavoured hemp, however, and the fish downstream begin to stir. The first fish to arrive is a good chub of about five pounds, which is closely followed by a shoal of smaller fish. They are immediately interested in the flavoured hemp and seek out depressions in the river bed where most of the hemp has settled. These chubs seem to ignore single grains and suck in several seeds at a time. In addition to the flavoured hemp, some ordinary sweet corn has been scattered on the run, but so far the chub have ignored it completely. They seem totally preoccupied with the special hemp. This big fish, for example, swims past several grains of corn and only stops to feed when it locates a clump of the black seed.
At last, one of the chub takes a piece of corn, but rejects it immediately. The flavour in the hemp is obviously excellent, but just like all other attractants, it won't hold scared fish. This shoal is spooked, and it melts away downriver. In our video, Hunting for Marble, Jill and I also used special flavoured hemp to great effect on our lovely River Team Haven Fishery. This particular shoal went crazy and scoured the bed of the river in a frenzied search for the special black seed. Despite their apparent craving for this flavoured hemp, the shoal became spooked by my movements behind the video camera, and they shot off into a sanctuary within the branches of a sunken tree. Those opening shots certainly showed how effective a special bait additive can be. In this next section of the video, we want to demonstrate how easy it is to create special baits from seeds like corn, wheat, tares and hemp. We'll start off with sweet corn. It can be a superb bait when used straight from the can, but fish can become wary of it on hard fish waters. There's a clue on the label of this can about why sweet corn makes such an effective bait. It contains salt and sugar, they are superb additives, but sometimes are not enough on their own. To prepare some special corn, first place it in a bait tub so that you can add liquid flavours and dyes like these. They will change the taste and appearance of the individual grains. First, you must add just enough water to fully cover all the corn. A food dye can then be added about half a teaspoon will treat the contents of a single can. After stirring, leave the corn in a fridge overnight and by morning it will have absorbed the dye and will look very different. Flavouring sweet corn involves a very similar procedure to dyeing it. Simply add the liquid flavour of your choice in the recommended quantities, stir and leave overnight. Nothing could be easier. Stewed wheat is a superb bait, especially for roach, bream, tench and barbel. To prepare it, soak the grains in water together with equal quantities of sugar and salt for at least 24 hours prior to cooking. Although an excellent bait on its own, Adding some hemp to the wheat at this stage will enhance its flavour and help draw fish into your swim when using it. 
After soaking, simmer the wheat and hemp mixture on a very low heat. It will take at least an hour of stewing to produce soft and succulent grains of wheat like these. Just perfect for catching quality fish, especially when fished over a bed of hemp. Just like wheat, tares like these can be combined with hemp, sugar and salt and should also be soaked for about a day before cooking them. Simmering tares for about an hour on a low heat produces the best results. You can see that these tears have started to split and in this form they'll make ideal hook baits. Hemp seed is one of the all-time great fishing baits. To prepare it we add sugar and salt, soak it overnight, bring it slowly to the boil but then immediately turn the cooker off. The seeds then stew slowly in the hot liquid as it cools. When draining the hemp, we always keep the precious dark liquid. It makes a brilliant ingredient for ground baits, pastes and bait dips. Some are transferred to a baking tray for drying out. After at least two days, when we are absolutely certain that the seeds are totally dry, we grind them in a coffee bean grinder to produce our own special ground cooked hemps. These make absolutely brilliant additives and can also be combined with other powder boosters to make very special baits. These homemade ground hemp's are fresh, full of flavour and can be added to ground baits and many hook baits. However, just like all good powder additives, they must be stored in airtight containers and labelled with a date. Ordinary maggots and casters are brilliant baits in their own right, but can definitely benefit from change of flavour and appearance. The first time I ever tried flavouring some maggots was many years ago, and I caught a superb brace of two pound roach from the Hampshire Raven on them. That experience had a big influence on me, and I've been flavouring them ever since. Powder additives are best so dry, degrease and condition them. Even really smelly old maggots can be saved with the addition of the right powders. Flavoured maggots like these can be used to devastating effect when fed accurately with delivery systems like droppers and feeders. In a river, for instance, the attractive flavour wafts downstream in the current and pulls fish up into your swim. On some fisheries though, the fish seem quite wary of ordinary feeders and so a different system is needed. Horlix is brilliant, but to use it you must first dampen your maggots thoroughly with water.
When you are sure that all the maggots are pretty wet, sprinkle on a little of the Horlix powder and shake the bait tub to distribute it evenly. To make sure the flavour is strong, you can also add a special bait booster and then get to work with your fingers. The result is a sticky ball of highly flavoured wriggling maggots that can be fed directly into the swim or, if need be, can be placed in an open-ended or cage-type feeder. Flavoured maggots are brilliant for fish like these perch and also these superb barbel which are holed up under a sunken branch. If you wanted to lure them out onto a nice gravel run you'd need an excellent bait to do it. One of the best baits of course is casters, especially when fished over a bed of flavoured hemp. However, the casters themselves can also be flavoured but first you must place them in a tub and cover them with water. Then add a liquid flavour and soak them overnight before using them. You must keep casters cool and covered in water or they'll deteriorate rapidly. Bread baits have been catching fish for donkey's years but seem to be neglected nowadays. A pity, because baits like paste, flake and crust seem to select quality fish and many a specimen has fallen to them. Anyone after Big Chub and Roach, for example, would be well advised to try bread. To make a traditional bread paste, you must use a stale uncut loaf that is at least three or four days old. First, remove all the crust from it and cut the rest up into pieces. Then, add a little water and leave it to soak for an hour or so. After soaking, mash the bread thoroughly with your fingers. Next, place an old tea towel over a plate and transfer the mashed bread onto it. Gather up the corners of the tea towel and then squeeze for all you are worth to eliminate the water. After an awful lot of squeezing, the towel will finally contain a brilliant traditional bread paste, which is a perfect bait to catch many different types of coarse fish.
Although plain bread paste will catch plenty of fish, especially big roach, it is also very easy to use it as a base to create some special pastes. In the following two examples, first ground hemp and then a highly flavoured powder additive are used to create two very different balls of excellent bait that cost well under a pound to make, are easy to mould into hook baits and are loved by fish like chub, tench, bream and carp. Baits similar to these can be made even more easily by using semolina as the paste base and then adding flavoured powder and liquid additives and finally binding the mixture together with water or milk. Don't forget that other ingredients like salt and sugar can also be incorporated into such baits. There really is a vast choice of additives available today. It is simply a matter of experimentation to discover what works best on your own waters. And when pastes can be made so cheaply and easily, there really is no excuse for not trying out a great many different types. Bread flake is another brilliant and inexpensive bait, but it must be created from very fresh bread. My method of using flake is to squeeze it on hard around the shank and eye of the hook, but I leave it soft over the hook bend and point. This allows the flake to swell in water. Ordinary flake is a superb bait, but if it isn't catching, the quickest and easiest method of flavouring it is to use a bait dip just prior to casting out into the swim. Plain bread crust can make very good floating and pop-up baits, but it disintegrates rapidly, gets blown quickly on hard-fished waters and also seems to have a magnetic attraction for birds like ducks, coots and seagulls. However, these disadvantages can be overcome with a few minutes work in the kitchen using a frying pan on a moderate heat, a lump of lard or butter and some powder additives. It is very important to keep the cooker on a moderate or even low heat to keep the baits sizzling slowly. You really must avoid burning them. In addition to the booster, some ground hemp has also been added to these crust cubes. And a superb, tough and highly flavoured bait has been created, which makes a very marked contrast to the original plain bread which was cut up just minutes earlier. Meat baits like sausage paste, chopped ham with pork and luncheon meats are brilliant for many species of coarse fish, but unfortunately Ordinary meats can get blown on pressured fisheries and so altering their appearance and flavour can give them a new lease of life. In recent years, for example, 
many huge barbel full of the flavoured meats. There are a number of ways of preparing it. There is an enormous variety of tin meats available that make really excellent baits for fish like barbel, chub, carp, tench and bream. Even when used straight from the can they catch plenty of fish and are also very easy to cut up into various sizes and shapes of hook bait. In fact, before even considering the addition of a special flavour, changing the appearance of meat baits can make all the difference between catching and blanking. Sometimes, for example, huge pieces may be required to catch big chub and barbel, but on other occasions, small or even tiny cubes may be the answer. One of the big advantages of choosing meat as your bait is the ease with which it can be cut up and modified. Whereas traditional meat cubes like these here have caught countless fish, sometimes educated specimens have become wary at the sight of them, and so irregularly shaped pieces, torn from the meat block, can be used with a much greater chance of success. Other ways of changing from the simple meat cube include using a string of them in kebab form, a combination of two or more roughly shaped pieces, or even cocktails with other baits. There's no doubt that meat is a great bait, and over the years, Jill and I have used it in various forms to catch a lot of very big barnbull. Here are some of them which were taken from the Hampshire Raven, River Severn and River Team. Special flavoured meat often has an edge over the ordinary variety and there are several ways of preparing it. A simple method is to place your cubes into a tub, sprinkle on your chosen additive and then shake the tub to coat the meat. After just a few seconds the result is a good bait with an even coating of additive. Potent liquid flavours can also be applied to meat baits by first spraying the inside of a tub, then adding the meat cubes, in this case some already coated with a powder booster, and then shaking the tub again to ensure an even distribution of flavour. These baits can be used straight away but by leaving them overnight in a fridge, or by freezing them and then thawing them, the flavours penetrate the meat more deeply, and freezing may also soften meat baits. In addition to specially formulated bait additives, there are many products available from supermarkets that can be used to flavour fishing baits. These are just some that Jill and I have used successfully, either on their own or combined with our sear boosters. 
One of our favourite methods of preparing special meat cubes is to use the microwave. After sprinkling the baits, in this case with a booster and some parmesan cheese, they are shaken and then cooked at full power for 60 seconds. This process melts the fat in the meat and helps the additives stick onto it. The result are excellent baits which have caught us a lot of fish. That sequence demonstrated that with very little effort, ordinary meat cubes like this can be modified into attractive and successful baits like this one. Another method is to fry meat cubes in a hard fat like lard, dripping or butter. These make great baits, but it's important to use a low or moderate heat that won't burn the meat or the additives. Here, a sear booster, some salt and some of our special ground hemp are fried with meat cubes in butter. And once again, a really great bait is created. Regular stirring will ensure that your baits don't burn and that the additives become evenly distributed over them. The longer you fry your meat baits, the tougher and darker they become. Finally, when they're done to your liking, transfer them to a plate and allow them to cool before using them. Another superb meat-based bait that attracts many kinds of fish is sausage meat paste. Our method of preparing it is to fry it together with a powder booster and some salt. There's no need to add any extra fat because the sausage meat itself contains enough already. Once fried, we allow the mixture to cool, add water and then start to bind it with semolina. These first stages are done in the pan because of the fat. When the paste begins to bind together, we transfer it to a plate, add more semolina and knead it until it adopts a firm texture that is easy to mould into hook bait. Although these sausage meat pastes will catch chub and tench, you may well find that bream and carp are especially fond of them. In this video, I have tried to demonstrate how easy and worthwhile it can be to create special baits from those that are inexpensive and readily available. 
Many of today's successful anglers, like Mark Dudley here, who holds the record for a huge catch of barbel from our haven fishery, owe some of their achievements to the amount of thought and effort that they put into their choice and preparation of fishing baits. However, whether your choice is a simple piece of bread crust or carefully fried piece of luncheon meat, there is no doubt that the bait is only part of the winning formula that you need to successfully outwit good fish. To catch superb specimens regularly, you need to put great thought into fish location, timing of your fishing sessions, tackle choice and also bait presentation. Having said that, whereas a great bait can't guarantee success, a bad one will probably guarantee failure. Fish like these are wary, highly sensitive wild creatures and because of angling pressure Many are now scared of ordinary baits, and it now takes something special to outwit them. So, I hope you found that useful, and will now be tempted to go make your own very special baits. Who knows, you may discover your very own monster bait that will help you go and catch a stack of fish on your favourite waters. And on that happy and optimistic note, I'll wish you the very best of luck. <laughs>